Hi, today we're going to look at rods. Now it's probably the most important part of the business we have in terms of clients contacting us with rods and getting it wrong. Not the client's problem at all, but it's just a basic misunderstanding of the rod collector's market, which is very different from the real collector's market. Let's look at one or two of the issues to start with. If you say your rod is mint, then mint is the day it came out of the factory. If you say your rod is immaculate, that's the day after. Everything after that is used. So if you say we get 20 rods, so they're all mint, then that means they're all brand new, never been used. If they are rods which have had a little use in good condition, then that's a better way to describe them. Now, in general terms, if you are collecting everything fishing, you would say most people in the UK and Europe collect reels. A lot or most people in the USA collect lures and some people collect rods. Some collect to use, some to collect to collect, and some collect to do both. So it's a very mixed market. Where the downfall is in rods, generally, if you're a non-collector and you look at them, you will say, granddad's rod, he never used it for 60 years. The fact that his father used it for 40 years before that, you've forgotten about, and this rod is in lovely condition. So we're gonna look at a few basic tips um, that perhaps you can use um, when you come to look at evaluation through Thomas Turner for either trading in or uh, selling your rods. So if we take a fairly standard Hardy rod, this is a Hardy Deluxe, produced for over 100 years, so there's plenty of them around. This is a 10 foot example, three piece with a spare tip. Now, the issues normally come with the spare tip. Both tips from Hardy, 99% of the time, would be identical. If not, you'd be taken out and shot. That's the end of it. So if you compare the two tips of this rod, initially, everything looks absolutely fine. We've got two tops, both are whipped the same color, which is a good indication, and both have got top eyes, which are similar. Now that's your first problem, they're not the same. So a good way to check the tip of a rod is put the two butt sections together, the bottom ferrule together, identical, then move along a rod and look at the tip, and hey-ho, we find this half an inch missing off the tip. So something has happened. And Hardy being Hardy, even the whippings with Hardy were in perfect alignment. And if we look close at this rod here and match the whippings up on this section, the whippings on this section are mismatched. So that's not the correct tip. It's been rebuilt or it's been replaced. And thirdly, to confirm it, if you place the eyes in the same dead right position and move to the bottom, the fells are half an inch out. So this has what is loosely termed a short or wrong tip doesn't affect the rest of the rod, doesn't affect the rod as a fishing rod, but to a collector this is like having a James Bond corgi car and the ejector seat man's missing. It's not correct. The value of one of these, mint, mint unused, it's in the hundreds. The value of one of these that's fairly immaculate, it's in the low hundreds. The value of one of these that's used with a broken tip can be sub 100. So you've got a vast difference in the price that you're going to get on the resale of a rod that's not correct. An original bag helps, not the end of the world if it's not there, but it certainly helps to complete the package. So when we talk about the top sections of the rod generally being the same, that moves us on to another problem. We have here a rod uh, by Farlows, a popular maker, and this is a super parabolic Fario club uh, made from Pezon Michel cane. Easy for you to say. This is a two-piece rod, but this is different. This has an additional spare tip and it has with it what's called a staggered ferrule. So the bottom section or the butt section is shorter than the tip. That improves the tip accuracy as far as casting is concerned. But in order that the tip doesn't break, the manufacturers have put in an extension split cane plug to ensure the top sections stay in good order. And if we look at the two top sections of this rod, they don't always come with two. You look at matching eyes, matching ferrule. Matching eyes, matching eyes, matching eyes, all the way to the top, matching tip rings. So these two top sections are correct and original, the same color, and all the whippings are in good order. When it comes to the whippings, look for discoloration. There's a slight discoloration between this green and this green, not the end of the world, but it may indicate it's been rebuilt. And on the hardy rod here, <clears throat> I don't know if the camera picks it up, but we can see here there is a change in the color between the bottom two inches and the rest of the rod. So that would indicate that the rest, that this has been revarnished at some point and cleaned off, 
and the person who has revarnished it or rebuilt it has cleverly left the original writing. But because the writing has aged, it has a different shade from the rest of the rod. So that indicates this rod has either been revarnished or it's been rebuilt. That further devalues the price. Unless it's had a professional rebuild for Hardy back to new. But if that had happened, none of these other faults would be there. So the rod market is very difficult. Very often we ask people to send rods to us because it's not until we check them individually and personally that we can get a true value. If you need any advice, log on the website, send a few pictures and we're happy to help. Thank you.